Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, PGC members, hello people on the tube! What's good man, welcome, welcome to another Brain Dump episode. Uh, this is Brain Dump 2, but technically it's episode 4.5 because this is adding on to the Black Myth Wukong playthrough. You said it's too much words, you don't give a fuck, get to the topic. All right, bro, listen up. Listen, listen, listen up. I just finished chapter one of Black Myth Wukong, and the game is... Delicioso. But man, is it confusing. Man, I don't know where to turn my head or what to think. This game makes no fucking sense, bro. Zero. I got off the end of the chapter thinking to myself, man, I really need to get some shit off my chest. So first and foremost, the game is fantastic. I really want to make that very, very clear. Let me just move my camera over here so you guys can see me in all more glorious 4K. <laughs> Listen, no, seriously, focus. Stop, stop distracting me. Um... So yeah, I've been playing Black Myth Wukong and the game is fantastic, the game is awesome. But Jesus, man, it's it's lost me. At the end of chapter one, oh, real quick, spoilers, duh. Just while I throw that out there, this is going to spoil chapter one for you. So just letting you know, if you haven't seen the, the, the playthrough of mine just yet up to this point, go watch it. Anyways, uh, I finished chapter one and at the end of it, you're fighting uh, the Black Bear. I forget his name, but... Um, you're fighting the black bear and ultimately he's been traveling and um, escaping you and you finally get to him and you finally fight the black bear. Black bear fight was difficult but really good. Um, I have some negatives about the game that I'm realizing but it's fine. The game's still awesome. Uh, by the end of it, he tries to fly away and escape again and he fails. <laughs> I don't know why he fails but he fails anyways. And... He ends up crashing down and he gets up and he's like, you know, at that point I thought he would be uh, running away again or, you know, scared to die or something. But he just starts begging and, begging and pleading. But he's like saying things like, oh man, you know, I was trying to look uh, take care of this great sage item, but, you know, I'm not worthy of doing it and all this kind of like. Yeah, you know, I was trying to do this, I was trying to do that, but I couldn't do it. And please forgive me and spare me and da da da. So I'm sitting here listening to the cutscene, watching it, right? Reading the subtitles that goes on. And I'm like, yo, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Just a second ago, we were fighting to the death and you were talking shit. Then you tried to escape and you failed. I didn't even hurt you trying to escape. You just, you just fell on your own. <laughs> and, and, and then now he's begging and pleading. So anyways... And then goes into his backstory. And it turns out the black bear is in the forest. And he he almost uh, grabs and, 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 and like um, kidnaps this kid almost. Uh, and has this kid take this gold over to the monks. And then what, this is what I, I think is going on. The kid takes the gold to the monks. Introduces them to all this gold and riches. Which then... Allows the, the monk to be accepted, the little kid to be accepted. Then, as the kid grows up, he gets further and further up the hierarchy of the monks. Right? Until he's head monk. But the problem with him doing that is, the gold that the black bear gave him, gave the monk this is, um, he, the, the, it's almost like he sold his soul to the bear. So now the monk's spirit is the black bear. So the black bear is essentially rising up the rank of these monks. And <laughs> this is where the game kind of confuses me a little bit. Because what it looks like in the cutscene, because it's done in like a really cool art style, like old school cartoon. Not anime, cartoon. Like it's like it's not really any voice acting. It's all just animation. It's really good. Uh, like, like artistically, it's really good, but it's just hard to understand what's going on. <laughs> and uh, what I think is like the, the, the cartoon is trying to symbolize is he, this monk, this little kid, sold his soul and infiltr and allowed the black bear to infiltrate 
the monk camp. Now the Black Bear can take over the monk camp and basically reign supreme over there. So as they're bringing all these, um, as as the as the little kid gets to be the, the head honcho monk, he's accepting all these gifts and all these um, robes and clothings. And one of them, and they they, they have like uh, the black bear's like sigil on them, right? So to symbolize that the black bear is still prominent in this monk's mind and his monk's soul, even though he was a boy when he first was inflicted, he's now an old man and he's still got this this black bear in it. And uh, anyways, the, the monk ends up enraging out and basically being consumed by the bear, and the bear ends up uh, uh, inflicting his element all over the. The, the the monks camp that like they've been you know building and working on this all this time since since the monk, since the head monk was growing up um and ends up burning the whole place to the ground and i think what the game is trying to symbolize with that because i don't really know but i think what the game is trying to symbolize is this black bear is like a a god a deity a demon uh, it's not necessarily uh bad or good i don't think i think he's just, just uh, the greed that's within inside us, that's within inside the monks, that's what's inside the beings, and um, and yeah, and basically, you sold your soul and let the demon in, and the demon is now taken over and killed and burnt everybody. Uh, so then here I come now, or at least here comes not me as the destined one, but the monkey king before hand, I think, and that monkey king ends up taking over the monk village, I think. <laughs> it's weird losing. It's lost me already, but it's losing me even more. And I'm going to have to watch the cutscene like two or three more times to kind of get what's going on, because it's just not explained properly. Uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not explained properly. It, it feels like it's up for interpretation, but it's not. You, you know when something is explained... In a way that, like, you already need the prerequisites of the story to understand what's going on. That's what it feels like. Versus, you don't know what's going on because we haven't told you. And you decide what's going on. That, that's, just what, that's not what it feels like. <laughs> so, I'm watching this thing. I, I, you know, whatever. And, and I'm going, man. This is fire art. This is fire gameplay. This is fire music. This is fire voice acting. But I really don't understand. So now we need to get these 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 stones, and I've got one out of the six. That's the main game is to go and get all these stones, or these shrines, or these dragon balls, or whatever word you want to use. Um, these relics. Let's go with that. And upon killing this black bear, I finally got the relic, and that's when it untold that story that I just told you. Now, I don't want to make the brain dump any longer than ten minutes. So we've got two more minutes to cook, um, because I'm not editing any of this. <laughs> um, in the end of the day. Black Myth Wukong is a really good game. And I think I'm going to have to go back and play it again to understand what's going on. Or it's one of those games where you're going to have to watch a breakdown to explain what's going on. Or do your research on the characters prior or before or after. Um, I'm going to keep it that way. I'm not going to look at anything. I'm just going to finish the game with the same raw feeling I have now. Um, and then do a brain dump at the end of every chap chapter. But... But man, it, 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 it's, um, it definitely threw me through a loop because the game was making sense and then now it doesn't. Like now I don't know if the destined one, the monkey that you're playing, is on the righteous path. Like it's, 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 it's spun me for such a loop. I don't know if the sun god or, or, or sun wukong, sorry, is a good guy. I, I don't even know if the keeper of the mountain is a good guy. I don't know anymore. Like this one cutscene has like threw a spanner in the works, and now I everything I believe before is like out the window. I I have no idea what the fuck's going on anymore. So <sighs> we'll, we'll learn as we continue on playing. We'll figure it out. Uh, one this last brain dump thing I want to talk about is um, the game's uh, uh, fighting. It's it's hard to kind of explain. Because it feels like, it feels like a Souls-like. But it's not really. It feels like the enemies should be responsive. But they're not really. And that's not, they're not good AI or it's 
But I feel like when I'm hitting the bosses, I'm doing the damage, and it's all fine. It's all great gameplay. It's just... I feel like it's hard to know what's going on if I'm doing the maximum amount of damage, if I'm doing my combos correctly, if I'm attacking at a good window of, window of opportunity. It doesn't... I'm struggling to find out if that's the case. Right now, my strategy gameplay-wise is beat the living shit out of them until you literally exhaust everything. They keep wailing and wailing and wailing and wailing and wailing on them until you exhaust all uh, combos, spells, abilities, everything. Stamina, everything. Just wail, wail, wail on them because these guys attack so much. Uh, these enemies attack so fast. They, they have such weird cleave, hit you everywhere and everywhere, not give you a chance to get in. Um, you really have to be on their ass really on the offensive in this game um my one critique my one peeve in this game is camera angles um this game has a infatuation with people enemies being really really big um uh, and your character being really tiny uh and it's a kind of i feel like it's supposed to symbolize like the destin one is fighting up against these great beings and as you're beating these great beings you're getting stronger and stronger right I think, it's, I think it's a good way to symbolize that. Um, but, unfortunately, gameplay-wise, it translates in really awkward, like, down-up camera angles. Yeah, I'm fighting this bear, dude, and the camera angle is, like, locked onto the bear's chest. But the camera can't go up that high because the monkey is so low to the ground, and the camera can't go through the ground upwards. So it's, like, basically, I'm, like, locking onto his waist knees... But then the, the Destiny one is so tiny, I'm hitting the, the, the bear's, like, shit. <laughs> so then the camera angle is trying to shoot it up so I can see. Uh, um, but then I can't quite see what move he's going to do. Uh, unless he's, like, a good distance from me. i got to be close because I don't have, you know how much distance moves. Especially not good damaging distance moves. So you get stuck in a situation where you're kind of not wanting to use the camera angle. I mean, the, the lock-on camera. But at the same time, needing to use it to keep the enemy in front of you because their moves are so grandioso, they're fucking flying everywhere. Um, and yeah, man, it's 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 a tough game to kind of get the balance right because what's also happening is the game is so beautifully graf graphical wise that the, the trees are uh, that the grass is so high up and the wind is throwing everything around and the fire is spitting everywhere. You actually can't see a lot of the time what move you're doing and what move the enemy is doing because wukong is oh, i keep calling it wukong, because the destin one is throwing his spear all around the place and you're flipping in the middle of your combos and you know you're trying to get your triangle out you know your heavy attack out you can't tell if you're doing the fourth part of your combo or the fifth part of your combo until it's already mid charged up and that's and you're lucky if you don't get hit by the enemy doing that because you know you don't know what part of the combo you're in um so it's really, really hard to kind of figure out what's going on. A lot of bosses are very sporadic in their movement, and the graphics is so rich that, like, you can't see what's going on. Such a blend of colors and a blend of effects. Wind being picked up, leaves being thrown everywhere. It's really hard to figure out what's going on. Along with the camera angle, uh, and then along with the actual combat itself, it's hard to keep up. Um, and that's what I think... The main, uh, my main critique with the game is at the moment. It's really hard to keep up with everything. Um, the story, the direction of the game, the enemy types, the enemies themselves, the boss battles, the camera angle, your moves, uh, which is a good problem to have. It's just when you're playing it, it doesn't feel as nice, you know? Watching it, maybe not so much. But playing it, oof, man. Um, that's me. That's my brain dump. I'm done. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you all for stopping by and watching the video. If you watched this before watching the previous, then, I mean, you guess you kind of ruined it for yourself. <laughs> Unless you played it before already and you're coming back to this on a later date. I don't know. A brain dump over. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening or night, depending where you're from. Much love and much respect. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening or night. I already said that. I'm done brain dumping. I'll see you when I see you. Lay late. Thanks for watching.